Hi, this is Hamada Zahawi, founder and CEO of Right Track Admissions, a global admissions consulting company. If you haven't been to our channel before? Get ready for an unfiltered account of exactly how to get in your top choice program, how to secure funding, and how to succeed both as a student and as a professional. If you haven't already done so, make sure to subscribe by hitting the big red button below, as well as hit us up on our social media handles, conveniently located below this video. So what are we going to talk about today? Today we're going to talk about letters of recommendation, a very, very important part of any application. So make sure to wait till the end to get all the tips, tricks, and hacks of how exactly to secure the strongest letter of recommendation for you. Now, when thinking about letters of recommendation, you want to think about how many letters you need and who to get them from in general terms. So first of all, most programs require two, some require three, in rare exceptions do they require four recommendations. And when thinking about who to get them from in general terms, if it's a very academically oriented program like law school, you want at least two that are academic and possibly one that's volunteer, one that's professional, one from an alum, one from a current student, right? If it's an MBA, maybe only one that's academic, one that's professional, and when it comes to the professional, you want to be thinking about whether it's a current supervisor, a past supervisor, and so forth. If there's been a while since you've been in school, maybe you can make a case to have two that are professional rather than academic, but you'd want to discuss why it is that you don't have an academic one in your addendum. So now how do you ask for a recommendation? First of all, always start early. Approach the recommender. Make sure that they're a cheerleader for you. They're the right person that's really going to be able to be a great advocate for your application. Then make sure to provide them with transcripts, possibly a draft of your personal statement, possibly uh, a resume. Put that all together for the recommender so they have the background information to write the recommendation. Also, make sure to provide them with clear instructions of how exactly to submit that letter of recommendation. And then finally, possibly even consider putting together an outline of anything that you really want the recommender to focus on when putting together the recommendation as it pertains really to the strengths that the program is looking for. Now let's say you have one solid recommendation or maybe two, but you need a third. If you want that third, you can look into things like asking your graduate student instructor or teacher assistant for a letter of recommendation. Definitely somebody who knows you well, who can speak about the strengths that you're looking for, that program is looking for, okay? If you can't get one from them, look into volunteering at an organization and seeing if you can try to get a letter of recommendation from somewhere you volunteer before you apply, obviously, to the school. Now, if you can't do that and you can't find another letter of recommendation, you can't get one from a specific supervisor or current supervisor, you're kind of running short and you're just kind of winging it with a last recommendation, make sure to mention that in your addendum, why it is that you can't get that final recommendation. And you can say the school was not conducive for building relationships with your faculty or with uh, TAs, right? Or you were not able to get one from work because you've moved or you don't want to tell your current supervisor so that you don't jeopardize your job, right? But in explore and put that in your addendum just to be able to satisfy and mitigate any issues that may come up in terms of the recommendations and when the school looks at it. So now, who don't you ask for a letter of recommendation? Don't ask a relative because there may be self-interest involved and the school won't take it seriously, right? They will think that the person's doing it because they're your relative. Don't ask someone famous and doesn't know you versus someone who knows you very well that is not well known. Again, an outstanding, really, really well-known professor who will just say, this person was good in my class versus someone who's like an adjunct professor who knows you extremely well, can speak about your academic abilities, intellectual prowess, and so forth, whatever's required for that program. Also, don't ask someone or put down someone who's a colleague and then state that they're your supervisor because that's also going to have a negative impact, especially if they find out that the person is just a colleague on the same level with you at work as opposed to somebody who supervised your immediate work. Don't ask someone who you're not 100% sure will give you a phenomenal letter of recommendation. Too often I've had clients who've come back to me, been rejected from a program, submitted new letters of recommendation from people they knew very well and were admitted. And when they, found, when they asked the former school why they weren't admitted, some of them had said that the letters of recommendation were not the strongest part of their file. So make sure that that person who's providing you with that letter is a cheerleader, is a staunch supporter of you. Okay, in terms of bonus tips, here's a couple that I really want you to think about. Number one, if you're applying to multiple programs, right? completely different. Make sure the recommendation, if you're using the same one, 
changes and is tweaked for the requirements of that program. You don't want to apply to a policy program, for example, and then use the same letter of recommendation for an MBA, for example, even if it's a joint degree. Okay? Number two, if you're a reapplicant, make sure that you're not using the same letter of recommendation from one year without adjusting the date or updating it to the next time you apply. Make sure that you update the date at a minimum. Number three, and we've already talked about this, in terms of any issues with getting a letter of recommendation, make sure that you address it in the addendum. For example, if you can't get a letter of recommendation from your supervisor, from a current supervisor, make sure that you address it in the addendum and explain to the school why it is that you can't do that. Now, as for a final tip, make sure to get the letter of recommendation early. Approach your recommender early because it is unbelievable how notorious recommenders can be for submitting either late, like really towards the end of the process, or even blowing past the deadline and submitting it after, thereby jeopardizing your chances of getting into that school. And you may be wondering why I'm up in this tree. It's because I used to love this spot when I was an undergraduate here many, many years ago. Okay, and so here's your call to action. We've already talked about the categories of the different types of recommenders you can have. So make sure you start outlining way in advance of your application submission who you want for each one of those categories. A favorite professor, a, you know, in terms of a professional experience, a supervisor, uh, in different levels, a manager, and so forth. Especially one that can kind of discuss different times of your own career progression or your academic progression. Well, I hope you found this useful and get you on the right track to success. If you have any questions for us, please post them below. We'll do our best to get back to you with further resources. If you haven't done so already, subscribe by hitting the big red button below. And as always, stay sane, stay safe, and stay connected.